Hello, welcome to this DCS F16 tutorial. In this video, we will cover controls and key bindings. Also covered will be your special and dice setup for countermeasures. To begin, we'll open our game, go to options, move over to the special tab, go to F16, and you'll see a variety of options here. If you have customized cockpits, you can set those. If you want your canopy to be tinted or transparent, personally, I prefer transparent. Canopy reflections, you have two options, static or none. I've found that none is better for canopy and MFD, or else you'll have a static image overlaid on both of these respectively, and it makes things a little bit harder to read or decipher. Afterburner detent, I have always off because I do not have a a throttle with finger lifts. If you do and you want to utilize those, you can have them on. Otherwise, just leave them off. And HMD render eye is utilized for VR players. If you want it in your right eye, left eye, or both, I have it in the right eye. Going down, if you have not watched our dice setup tutorial video under the general playlist, please go ahead and watch and install that. Once you do, to set up dice, we will come to Manual 1, set it up exactly as you see here, chaff 1, burst interval 1, salvo quantity 3, salvo interval 1, manual 1 flares, burst quantity 0. The rest of these options under flares don't matter because we have set it to 0. Under manual 2, chaff will be 0 for burst quantity. The rest of these don't matter because we set chaff to zero. Manual two flares, we set burst quantity to two. Burst interval to 0 0.5. Salvo quantity to zero. Salvo interval to 0 0.5. The rest of these I have as the defaults for dice. What this does is we set it up so we have a program to dispense chaff and a program to dispense flares. That way we're not popping both of them at the same time and being wasteful. We can determine what we need for the threat at hand. After that, we'll come over to controls. Under controls, we will go to F16 sim, axis commands, and we will start off binding our pitch On the F-16, you want to make sure that you do not have any curve. The plane itself has a curve built in, so you're just adding curve on top of what the plane already does. You can play around with it, but I find a curve of zero is the best. Once again, the same for the roll. We can bind that. Same thing here. Rudder, you want to bind that to your rudder pedals. I have a curve of 25 and a dead zone of 3 for my own preference. You can change that to your liking. If they feel too mushy, reduce the curve. If they feel too snappy, increase the curve. Next thing we want to bind is our thrust for our throttle. Make sure you do not have any curve or dead zone on your throttle. And then your wheel brakes left and right if you have wheel brakes available to you. We also want to bind radar cursor switch, X and Y axis. If you fly something like the F-18, this is equivalent to your TDC. If you don't fly that, this is used to control where our radar or targeting pod is looking. So if you bind this, I have on my Orion a joystick on my throttle. I have it on there. I put a 25 curve on the X and the Y to make it a little bit finer tuned control around the center. And I also have the Y inverted. So when I press up, it goes up. And when I press down, it goes down. You can experiment with your controls and see what you like. 
After that, we'll come to the regular commands, and I'm going to start off with my stick. So the first thing we want to bind is the display management switch. On my Orion stick, I have a castle hat on the front center of my stick. I have it bound to that. You fly an F-18. This is essentially your sensor control switch. So up, down, left, right. Moving over, on my stick I have a trimmer hat. I will bind my trim up, down, left, right. And in between those two hats, I have a smaller mini hat, which I utilize for my TMS, target management switch, up, down, left, right. Additionally, on the front of my stick, I have a red weapons release button. You will bind that to weapon REL button right here. On the trigger for your stick, if you have only one detent, you will bind the second detent here. If you have a stick with two detents, you can bind both the first and the second detents, respectively. On the front of my stick, I have a ring finger pinky button, which will be utilized for nose wheel steering, seen here. NWSAR. I also have a paddle switch available, which I will bind to paddle switch depress. On the left hand side of my stick, I have a thumb hat. If you fly in 18, this is utilized in the 18 to select your air to air weapons. In the 16, we will bind this hat to these buttons. So on that thumb hat switch, pressing right. I have bound to dogfight slash missile override switch cycle. Pressing forward, I have dogfight slash missile override switch dash missile override. Pulling aft on the hat, I have bound to dogfight slash missile override switch dash dogfight. And pushing down in the depress of that hat, I have dogfight slash missile override switch center. If you have if you do not have a depress on this on this hat, you don't need to bind center. It's a nice to have, but you do need your missile override, dogfight, and cycle. This is utilized for changing to a dogfight mode, a missile mode, or a cycle between your air to ground and missile modes on your plane. That's all for the stick. Now I'll move to the throttle. On your throttle, you may want to bind a seat adjust up and down. Not necessary. You can utilize the in-plane controls, but it's a nice to have. Something you will want to bind if you have available is land LG handle down and up. This is your landing gear. If you don't have controls or switches available for this, no worries, you can click it in the cockpit. Next, if you have a switch available for a parking brake, you will want anti-skid switch, anti-skid in the off position for your parking brake, and anti-skid -squ switch, parking brake in the on position for your parking brake. Another nice to have is your eject button, your ICP master mode button air to ground, and ICP master mode button A to A. If you don't have bindings for these, you can just click them in the cockpit. No worries there. The next thing we'll want to bind if you have a button available is emergency stores jettison button. This will jettison all of your fuel tanks and air to ground stores if you press it. Another is master arm, both arm and off. I have mine on a three-way position switch. So on the up position, I have master arm, 
middle position off. And in down position, I have rearm refueling window. That way I don't have to open the radio menu to commence my rearming and refueling. And just flip the switch past safe to down. If you have a knob available to you, you may want to put fuel quantity select knob clockwise and counterclockwise on your knob. If you don't have one available, once again, that's fine. You can click it in the plane. My knob has a depress function, so I have that bound to external fuel transfer switch norm slash wing first. This will be utilized for telling the plane to drain our wing tanks before our center tank. Next, if you have a button available, you will want get new plane respawn. It's again, nice to have, not a need to have. I also have a switch for my F1 cockpit view and my F10 theater map view. On the Orion, I have that right below the throttle. And I also have buttons for man on the mode knob, mode knob man. This is used once during startup and then never used again. If you don't have an available keybind, don't sweat it. This is just for uh, startup. You can click it in the plane. And I also have a keybind for my communication menu. Those are all separate buttons I have on my throttle. Now I'm actually going to move to the throttle quadrant that I use for uh, thrust and whatnot. So on there, I have a switch on the far left to toggle my labels. Moving over from that, I have a button for expand slash FOV button to press. This is a button that you should definitely have available to you. Moving over from that, I have a um, spring-loaded wheel. You can put this on whatever you'd like, but this is used for changing your radar elevation control. This is called Ant Elevation Knob, Antenna Elevation Knob, clockwise and counterclockwise. Make sure this is it, um, in a convenient binding location for you because you'll be using it a lot for air-to-air -air combat. It's fluing your radar up and down. Next, I have, essentially, if you fly the Hornet, the TDC Depress in this plane called the Enable Switch Depress. So I have that on the push down of my analog joystick on my throttle. From here, we will move to program knob one, program knob two. If you fly the Hornet, this is equivalent to selecting your chaff or your flares. So I have this on the top most hat switch on the right side of my throttle. Forward for chaff, program knob one, backwards for flares, program knob two. The important takeaway here is this is selecting your ch chaff or flares. Chaff for knob one, flares for knob two. In order to dispense our currently selected program, we will bind countermeasures management switch forward, which I have on the depress of that hat switch. Moving down from that hat, I have a semi-moon hat. I call it the boat hat. We will bind countermeasures management switch right to the down press, not depress, down press, and countermeasures management switch aft to the up press. On that same hat switch, forward press, I have man range knob CW, and for the aft, I have man range knob CCW. The forward and aft on this hat is used for your targeting pod, zoom in and zoom out, and the up and down that we bound to the countermeasures management switch aft and right controls will be utilized for turning your jammer pod on and off. Moving down below that hat switch, I have a speed brake switch, which I will bind the forward position to speed brake switch 
forward slash retract. And the back momentary position to the speed brake switch aft extend momentary. Below the speed brake switch, we will bind uncage switch. I have a little button there for that. Those are all of the key binds that you might find useful for this aircraft or that you'll need to fly it. I'll go into more detail on what they're all used for and what they all mean in their respective videos dealing with those buttons. Thanks for watching.